Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about support vector machines or SVM in scikit-learn. So uh, we need to bring SVM from scikit-learn and we also need NumPy and uh, Matplotlib PyPlot. So here uh, I have some X and Y data, right? X are my 2D points and Y are the targets. And here is a, a binary classification. Uh, I only have two classes with uh, targets of 0 or 1. And I'm going to show you how to apply support vector machine to this data with four different kernels, linear, polynomial, radial basis function, and the sigmoid. So here I create this, uh, basically, this uh, tuple here. And I say, go in the uh, tuple, and for kernel in it, go ahead and apply this uh, calculations and do the plot. Okay, so as we go in the loop, the first thing we do is the classification. We call the SVM SVC. We pass to it the regularization parameter. I explained that in one of my previous videos. So this is the regularization parameter, and uh, the magnitude of that is inversely proportional to the strength of the regularization. So the smaller it is, the bigger the effect of regularization going to be. You choose the kernel from this uh, uh, tuple here. So we first start with linear and move all the way to sigmoid. There are some other parameters here. There are lots of parameters, but here we are not going to discuss all of them. And then there is a gamma. Gamma here is a, a parameter that determines the uh, radius of influence for a single training data. So if gamma is small, means the uh, influence radius is large and uh, vice versa. So like this C, right, is inversely proportional to the radius of influence. And if you say auto, then gamma is determined by one over number of features. There are other uh, methods to determine gamma as well, right? There is a scale, there is auto and so on. And we let the um, system determine the number of features determine gamma. Then once the classifier object is uh, created, we pass the dot fit method, like all other uh, machine learning algorithms in uh, scikit-learn, pass to it X and Y, and now uh, the system is going to uh, find all of the support vectors and uh, anything else that is needed determines the slack variables, right? Uh, everything that uh, you need for a, what we call soft margin SVM. And it is gonna apply soft margin SVM and there is a chance of misclassification as you'll see. Okay, of course with a penalty. And then here we create a figure for each one. We clean up the figure. We give it a specific size so the pictures are not too big. And then what we do is uh, with the scatter plot, we uh, plot what? We plot the x data, uh, right? X has the x and y position of the points. So we pass the x and the y position of the points. And then uh, for color, we use the y values. Right, so we use zero for one color and one for one color. And then we make sure that uh, they are plotted on the top of everything else. So we give them a high Z order. In one of my previous videos, I talked about it. I use a color map and I choose the edge colors to be black. Uh, also, I plot my support vector. So one of the things you can get out of the classifier is support underscore vector underscore. And this is going to show the support vectors or those data that are going to determine the boundaries, right? We call them support vectors. So here we are showing the support vectors, their X data, their Y data, and we show them with bigger circles and we make sure their edges and faces are black and again, high order. So they are plotted on the top of everything else. Okay, so this is plotting the data and the support vectors, of course, support vectors in bigger circles. And then 
we are going to consider a, a single point here in the uh, training domain and see which class each one of these uh, kernels is going to predict for it using the classifier.predict. The point is point negative, uh, negative point one and negative point five. And you'll see interestingly enough that depending on which one of these kernels we use and which uh, boundaries that we have, uh, you're going to get different classes for this, which is quite a bit interesting. So um, that that's I deliberately chose that point kind of close to the boundaries. So as the boundaries shift, you see the classification changes. The next thing I want to do is I want to plot the regions of class 0 versus class 1 with different colors. So for that, I need a, a color mesh here. And I also want to show you the boundaries with contours. So for that, we need to create mesh grid data. And one of the commands that you can create mesh grid is called mgrid. mgrid is like mesh grid, but it's a dense multidimensional mesh grid. OK, so um, that's one of the things you have. This is going to give you a dense mesh grid. And we want a dense mesh grid here to kind of fill it with color. So I use the mgrid command here. And uh, I pass to it the minimum and the maximum of x and y and the steps. So my x, y, minimum, maximum are defined already, negative 3 to 3. The other thing you have to pass to is here this extra J. So the number of steps, if it's 200, you say 200 J. I'm not sure exactly, to be honest with you, why we have to use this J for. But I know if you don't use this J, you are going to get an error. So this J is not really a typo or something. It has to be there. But when I inspect that data X and Y, they are exactly from negative to 3 to 3 with this uh, 200 data points basically between them or the step size that is enough to make 200 points so i create my x and y and then for the z data that i need i get it from the decision function so the classifier has another method called decision function okay you pass to it the x and the y data and that will give you the z values now, how would you pass to it the X and Y? That's one thing. The other thing is, what is this decision function at all? So first, let's talk about the decision function. So the decision function returns, of course, the decision function for this. But what is it? So it is basically the distance of the sample points to the separating hyperplane. So the points uh, in the training data that are, or in general, in X and X, X and Y, Y, that are closer to the hyperplanes, they get basically smaller values, and as you get away, they get what? They get larger values, okay? And there are two ways that this class decision function works. Either you set it to OVO or OVR. OVO, it is proportional to the distance from the hyperplanes. If you say OVR, then it's a monotonic transformation of the OVO values, and by default, it is on OVR. So what this one does, it gives you values, right? That as you get away from the planes, the values get larger, right? And But if you use OVR, basically the values uh, are not going to be as, uh, they are going to be the monotonic transformation. So you get those uh, z values now that you have z x x and y y you are ready to do your color mesh and you are ready to do your uh, contour plots now for contours we use the black color and we use a uh, dash and lines and we use three levels for the slack variable right negative one zero and one which we typically have in our um support vector machines zero for the mid plane exactly and negative one and one are for the two boundaries passing through the support vectors okay and so i pass those levels to it and those levels are dashed lines and the middle plane exactly is going to be solid line right for color mesh for all of those dense points that are going to be colored one thing on one side one thing on the other side I go ahead and I pass X, Y, and then positive Z's only. 
And again, a color map. I limit my X and Y. I remove the ticks and then I add a title based on this figure number and this figure number is increasing. I started at one and increase it one at a time at the end of the for loop. So the figure number goes to four and my kernel goes all the way to what? To sigmoid and finally I show my plot. One last thing I need to talk about very fast is this NPC underscore that you might say, what is this guy? Because Rabel, I told you, this is flattening the data, right? I talked about this guy in one of my previous videos, but this NPC, what it does, it's concatenation of the data along the second axis. So if you see that NPC uh, underscore C, uh, you have some idea of what it is. And here we perform this so that we can pass it to the decision function. So this is the format that I need from the XX and YY to pass to the decision function. So it gives me what the Z values, okay? So now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and run that and see the results. So if we go from the first one, this is your linear, then we have your uh, polynomial of order two, and then uh, we have your radial basis function, RBF. And finally, we have what? We have the sigmoid function for the tangent hyperbolic. So these are my data, as you can see, right? All of the data are circles, support vectors. They have this kind of thick circle around them. And uh, as you can see, one class is colored blue. One class is colored kind of brown. And you see that uh, if you look at the linear, so assume that the data can be separated by uh, linear planes, not necessarily easily, but as you can see, there is clearly one misclassification because this data, there is no way you can separate it perfectly. You cannot do what we call hard um, margin SVM. You have to use soft margin and you have to add penalties for misclassification. So this data is clearly misclassified, as you can see. This is the mid plane of the margin, and these are the uh, margin planes, as you can see, passing through the support vectors, except for, of course, this one that is uh, misclassified. And then uh, it, you see, except for one data kind of, the linear one is not really bad. It's doing a decent job. Now, as I said, the data are not perfectly linearly separable, so we can use kernels here. And one of the kernels you can use is polynomial, right? Which is like uh, x times y plus some constant to some power, and that power is three here. And since we have not provided the constant, I assume that is considered to be like zero. And as you can see here, the data is uh, all classified correctly right the boundaries are clearly curved and as you can see the distances are not like this linear anymore so this distance from this to this and this to that is not the same as here so uh, going from the slag variable negative one to zero and zero to one does not mean necessarily traveling same distances right here you see the uh, gaps are narrowing here the gap is increasing for one class, for the other class, not necessarily too much, a little bit maybe, right? But uh, you see that polynomial of order three can separate the data here. If you look at the radial basis function, which is like a Gaussian basically, again, you see that it is capable of separating the data properly. And there is no misclassification, of course, here. The contours are more complicated. They are now kind of closed contours. And this mid plane here is again a, a complicated shape here, but you see that the uh, RBF with an auto gamma can separate the data perfectly. And sigmoid, as you can see here, is not doing an amazing job. There are at least two data that are not classified correctly, and then there is what there is basically um, these two data that are almost at the mid plane so inside the margin i have like three data right uh, two data clearly on the wrong side and two data are inside the margin right here the polynomial is only one data in the margin 
and RBF, uh, right? If you look inside the margin, I have a few, okay? Right? Linear is uh, kind of one data in the margin in the wrong side. So if you look, I would say uh, the good performance here is probably for polynomial. Polynomial here is doing kind of the best. Then probably after that, you can say uh, probably um, RBF and linear. Okay, sigmoid is not clearly doing such an amazing job in this case. But anyways, this is what you get from SVM. So hopefully you learn how to uh, use support, uh, to apply support vector machines from scikit-learn, right? Bring it from the scikit-learn, train it, and uh, then use, uh, get the support vectors out of it, get the decision function out of it to show the contours, to show a color mesh like those blue and brown uh, parts that we created with dense mesh, right? And uh, anything that could be useful for you, prediction. Let's talk about the prediction one second because that is an interesting thing. So um, before we uh, finish this video, let's look at the predictions. That, uh, that is interesting. So if you look for the data at negative 0.1 and negative 0.5, linear predicted class 1. And blue here is class 0 and brown is class 1. And here if I go to what? Negative 0.1 and negative 0.5, right? So it is going to be at about, um, let's find it, so somewhere here almost, right? Something like that. So as you can see, clearly it's in the brown area, okay? It is in the brown area, and um, that is class one. Now, the same thing, if you use the polynomial, look what happens. So, negative 0.1 and what? Negative 0.5. So, let's go to negative 0.5 and then negative 0.1. You see now it is in the blue area. So, the class predicted is 0. Then it says for the RBF is also the same thing. And you can see that if I go down to that area, that is almost again this point and this is exactly in the blue area class zero finally if i come here then i'm talking about a point like there and that's in the brown area and that is what that is class one so you see clearly you get different classes for some point in the middle right if you use what different uh basically uh, kernels here now of course if a point is completely here on this left side you see all of them predicted to be class uh, zero because the data with class zero are all on this side and if it's completely on the right side then it is going to be predicted class one but you see with sigmoid, you have some extra areas here that are created that you don't see in any of the other ones. This area here, and that is one of the reasons I told you sigmoid is not really doing such an amazing job. It's creating some kind of like small island or something here too. So it's not really uh, doing it two uh, separate uh, areas of blue and brown. It makes it like two areas of blue and one of brown. So sigmoid is clearly not doing a good job here, and these uh, these three are better. And uh, but linear, you see, it's very simple at the price of a small penalty misclassification. It is uh, way more understandable, although these two are not bad. So just wanted to tell you that the final class also depends on what kind of kernel you're using, and it's not going to be the same. Okay, thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you in my next lecture. Thanks.